ever felt the shame when I came to the Lord and he saved my soul and everything in my life completely. And I felt so good inside. So 12 years ago, God did this in my life.
these signs may God bless you and be with your spirit. song is, is uh, Days of Elijah goes, we are in uh, a, a disaster time uh, happening all over the world. And these are the days I really, we feel it in our bones that Lord's going to come. And uh, I pray that he comes quickly because people are hurting, they're suffering, a lot of them have Make sure your heart's ready for his coming in now. Thank you. 
does it go to next? We can come to that point in our lives that God comes through so many ways in all of our lives. And you look around all across the church, you'll find somebody that's had a movement of God in their heart. And that's good. It's where we can all be able to be able to reach and to reach out for God and to reach out for people that they can do and know that God is a wonderful God that is watching over us and he does all these different things in our lives. We come to the point of this on Revelation and the 21 that we've used. And you see two fearless future witnesses that are really coming out in this particular sermon. It gives us the understanding to know that God's using you, that we can be used, where God wants to do all these things around us and to where that we're doing what God wants to do. I want to read quickly, and I know I'll bring it up little by little, and I like using it a lot in giving these words. When you look at Revelation chapter 11, and we're going to go through chapter 1 through 24, it says, Then there was given me. Who is that me? Well, that's John the Apostle. That's the man that wrote the book of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. All he's doing is writing what Jesus told him to do and what to say. And it's a measuring here that a rod like a staff, and someone said, Get up and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship in it. Leave out the court which is outside the temple and do not measure it. And for it has been given to the nations, and they will thread and underfoot the holy city, for 42 months. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophecies for 1,260 days. At the bond of yours is explaining a little bit about America's 364 and a half every four years. And then you find that they got theirs, it, uh, it came out where it's 360. So it's four difference, but it is it makes a difference because it goes on and on. But it said that I will authority to my two witnesses, they shall prophesy for 1,260 days and close in sackcloth. Uh, These are the two olive tree and the two lamb stands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone wants to harm them, fire flows out their mouth and devours their enemies. So if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed this way. These have the power to shut up the sky so that the rain will not fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and strike the earth in every plague as often as they desire. When they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up out of the abyss will make war with them and overcome them and kill them. And their deed, their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city which mystically is called Sodom and Egypt where also their Lord was crucified. Those, of, those from the people and tribes of the tongues and nations 
will look at their dead bodies for three and a half days and will not permit their dead bodies to be laid in the tomb. And these who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and celebrate, and they will send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. But after the three and a half days, the breath and life from God came into them. And they stood on their feet, and great fear fell upon those who were watching him. And when they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here, then they went up into heaven, into the clouds, and their enemies watched them. And in that hour, there was a great earthquake. A tenth of the city fell. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake. And the rest were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe in past, behold the third who is coming quickly. It takes us to a point that prayers have to come to all of us. Comes a time that we have to come to the point that we're looking and asking and believing that God is wanting to do things in our lives. He wants us to where he continues on. You see that God is an amazing grace, and he brings that into us. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, the NIV says this, that while we were yet sinning, Christ died for us. Think about that. Long before you were born or anything you were going through or any parts of the schools that you were raised in. But you think about this great grace and the giving of the, the pleasure of our, our families to where that we can come to know that God blesses us. And he wants to come into us that we can pass it on to those that are around us. It's a peace that can only come that God can give. And God of us have been blessed with it, with the blessing of his peace. He is there with us. There's times in our lives when we think about the wonderful satisfactions that come around. We got a little fella that's a little gets in that maybe you might know him in your past about underdogs winning, coming out of on top, the odds, the attracted against them. A guy that was coming to a point that this is the time, this is the hour, this is what God can do. It's a one day becomes the greatest athlete to play the game. It's the one that comes along and gives us the gleam as we realize that we can do some athletically things that God has played upon us, and we did go through it. Even the very smallest thing that we did, it was something that God did to you, and he wanted you to have that presence. And then I like my little friend, that's my grandson, and he's a good uh, football player. He was and a wrestler at the same thing he done. So many things that are there, and you understand, you understand that God can pick us all out, that God is pleased, and something comes up with it. And there's something about that loving that little guy who comes out on top, and he came to his points. When you think about it in the Bible, you think about the love that God had for David, and uh, did beat Goliath. It's a story. It's a giant. He's a man that's coming up against a little bitty sh a shepherd boy, but a, sh a little boy comes along and he wins the day because God wants to use us in the ways that he does like that. You think about Gideon who went out with 300 men, not very many against a great big army. He came to multi-thousands and thousands of Midianites, but all of a sudden it came to that day that it was there in that moment that Gideon and those people were moved that God said, I want to use this church. I want to use this group. 
I want it to be something that only I can bring into your lives. Here's a story and a prophecy of two different men. And it reads like this, is that idiots guides to your bone. Uh, idi the idiots, I'm going to get that right. I didn't say that right. But it's the back of this revelation here. He said, if you're an aspiring screen uh, writer, it's hard to go wrong if your pitching includes to be dragged your determined underdog, standing up against a much and more powerful force, outcast, outnumbered, and out of options there. But your hero, that's the secret, that you can know that I can do if God is with me. I know Holy Spirit is with me. And all these things, they come into our hearts and our lives. We can see the different things that can come, and they come to that point in our life. When you think about this story that is down up here on number 14 there, you're thinking about the book of the book of Revelation. He was a man, his name was John. He had, and I'll tell you more about him later, of the, the things that were so bad unto him. But just to tell you that they boiled him in oil, and it was something that almost would take his life away from him. But he was given his heart to God. And he was so good before God that God used John to write the words that Jesus was telling him. And he did it so gratefully as he came to this particular moment in the life that he had gone through and know that it's our God that comes through only the way he wants to. And somehow it comes to that point. This book of Revelation, who was he? How bad was he? He was placed there by Domitian, the powerful man in the empire, Caesar of Rome, conqueror of the world, the fastest person that was out there. He exiled John to be a forgotten person, to be forgotten of, and yet to arise from all the dust of the barrels and the islands. He gave him to where he could uh, receive the book of revelation of Jesus Christ, and he spread them out that we have it in the word, that all of us have it, and know that that is our privilege to know that God is doing this inside of us as well. When you look here in Revelation 1 and verse 1 and 2, it said the revelations of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his old, his bond servant, the things which must soon take place. He sent and communicated it by his angel to his bond servant John, who testified to the words of God, to the testament of Jesus Christ, everything he saw, and he's telling it. And even here in this part of the Bible of Revelation, he is writing down what God was telling him, and he believed it, and he believed that we needed it. And God did that so much in us. And knowing that God is in control, we come to a point that understanding this, that John is about 90 years old. A old little buddy, isn't he? But he came. He came in, in such a way as a hero. A man that would never keep ashes. He just turned to the good thing of what God can do and how much God does this in us. In the book of the full judgment that we see and read the different things, there was the first seven that were on the seals of the things that were read up there and band together. Ten or, the second seven are those that did the trumpets and the things that were going on. We're moving upon, and we also look the seven of the bowls. Bowls? You know, what's bowls? And different things like that. But you understand that somehow, some way, between the fifth and the sixth one, something took place. It took this interjected explanatory of what God was doing. It was separating us. It was also bringing mathematics to us. And the things that God was saying to us, I want to bring this to you and to those, those of yours that you love and know. 
And John is told to take the scroll for his strong angel and to eat it, and it became sweet to his taste, but bitter to his stomach, very unusually. And then beginning to chapter 11, John is told to tell something about those little things that were coming down upon him, and he know that somehow, some way, God was going to do that, and that's what he has done there. He's given them a measuring, a measuring of this rod like a stuff, a staff there, and he understand that get up and measure the temple of God at the altar of those who worship in it. Me, me, that's what he's saying. There. Me sitting in this place, sitting in this house, sitting in this time. It's a time for us to bring out our our measuring things and get up and realize that the measure of the temple of God and the altar and those who are worshipped in it, he's telling us that something is special. And John is declaring that, that we have a purpose gift to us is to know that he cares for you. And he tells us to know the court, the outside, the different things. He told them in this story in chapter that I just read to you a while ago, he was telling the measure of the temple. He was telling him about the altar. And then suddenly he writes down and measures the worshiping people that are in it. That means you and I, all of us, where that we can worship God and give thanks to God. It's a time of knowing that I can know that I can love him so much that when I get to talking with him, I feel him. I know that he cares. He does watch over us if we'll let him to do that. This Jewish calendar that we have here that's been brought out, it was 1,260 days. And you try to add that thing up, and what it says here is that a uh, Jewish question is where they got if they got deities in those particular uh, times of each one. And then it multiplied by the 42 months, it was 1,260 days. Now, now we're going to sit there and we can turn around and say, we got to read that? You bet you do. You need it. You need to know that God wants to do this in us. And that's what he was passing down upon him at this particular time. A difficult time. And some of us are going through difficult times. We got a lot of things that are going crazy. In many parts of the states, they're only paying three dollars and fifty cents for people to buy anything in any of, of of America, but not in good old California. We have to pay them almost five dollars, and they go a hundred a dollar fifty, isn't it? It's a lot of money for stuff like that. We think about what God can do in our hearts and our lives. We come to him. And the only thing I see so many things when I'm looking down on all these things is that somehow in this particular point that John is standing there and he knows the world's got some people that are being beat up. They were being people that were being punished. They had people that were going through different things that they didn't really want to go in their lives. But they were trusting that this is a day that our God has made. A God that watches over us. And he does that so much in our hearts and our lives. And we see the different things that are passing out upon them. That this is the thing that God does those things. If we'll, even in the difficult times. That I can trust in my God. F.B. Myers wrote on David. He wrote this. The divine provision meets every need. Silences every anxiety. God has provided all contingencies in some unlikely corner, likely of shepherd, but in the artisium cottage. God has his prepared and appointed instruct instruments. You can have a song in you. You can have something to do that's good unto God. He came to a point that they can have the shadow of the hand. Yet it's a moment when you're in the hand of God. When you know that he comes through, that only he can do in all of our hearts, in all of our lives. 
We come to a point that now we find that he is a stone that's been placed by God. We see that Jesus is a shepherd that's been chosen by God. It came to a point that Samuel came and he was anointed by a king. His father forgot. And David was in the field and sheep are hating. But I want to just say this to you. Don't waste your time. Just give it to God and say, God, I'm giving this soul of me, this person of me, of all that I can be. God, help me, Lord, to be everything that you would have us to be. There comes times in our life that we begin to see the witness of it. And I've been around a lot of people that I've seen are fantastic preachers. There's a guy I can call you name to name. Right down, that guy's one of the greatest preachers I ever heard in my life. But I also know God's also given us and told us to share what God has given you. And from you, there you can begin to show to those that are around you. You see this unique uh, place that we come to God. And I was reading down here that the Lord has a way of looking at the insignificant, so that that are in the second seat or living in the shadow of life. But what he did is, and I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days. And so they did, they did, and clothed in it. There's a people that say, God, I'll do what you want me to do. And I believe that there's people inside this church that you have given yourself, and God is going to do something for you. Isn't it wonderful? You've got hope for somebody around you. A younger, your grandies, you can reach out and bring them some grandy things to them of what God has done to you, to them. And that's what God wants to do. When the work, it takes it, it comes into us, not because we're doing the work, we're doing it because he's working for us too and blesses us. He doesn't ignore us. The church is where the touch it comes. The glory comes from God that's better than anything that I can ever do. But it comes to the point that he gives it to me to keep it there, and I rejoice. I called them up the day I gave my heart to the Lord just after being with her and giving my heart to the Lord. And, and I gave it to him, and I, I said, God, they're going to leave right now. They're going home right now. I said, I, I'm not, I don't want to get up in front of everybody. I said, that's embarrassing to come up here and say, no, I want to be saved. And I turned around and said, God, if you want me to go up and do it, I'll do it. If you want me to kneel right here, I'll do it gladly here. And I did, and I fell to the ground. And Jesus Christ came into my heart. And those are the privileged moments that God did for me. He kept it with me. And how wonderful that God can do in our lives. You see that there's many times that the idea is, is two men are witnesses. We see a lot of things that are going on. They're talking about a lot of martyrs and things that are going on in other places. We find that there's not so much of sackcloth to a lot of people. But God comes into our hearts and our doors. And many times I've used that word peace, peace, wonder. And did you not get peace? What God can do in you? He's given us witnesses. And these are the two olive trees, it says in verse 4 of chapter 11, the two lampstands that stand before the Lord. There are people of the cram the kingdom of he of heaven is at hand. You can talk to him about the olive trees and the lampstands. He can bring men up like Joshua, Zariabo. You can see where God is coming through over and over and over again. It's not just once. It's not just a few. It's a noble of people that come to God, that God comes into our hearts and our lives. And that's where he said that if anyone wants to harm them, fire flows out of their mouth and devours their enemies. If anyone wants to harm them, to be, uh, to be, uh, he, he must uh, be killed in the way. And they had this power to shut down the sky and that 
there will be a rain. There will not be during the days of the prophesying. But they said they have a power over the waters to turn in them into the blood, to strike the earth and every plague so often as they did. And all God comes down in all these things in our hearts and our lives, and it's so hard to explain it. But God is there, and I tell you, I am a lucky man. I've been blessed by God. And I thank God for everything he's done for me. I, I gave him the thanksgivings of God with the day that he filled me with his Holy Spirit. I was in a church, and I turned around, and I had girls that were up there, women in the church. They would get around you, and they would say, uh, get up up on the altar. I said, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to get on the altar and different things like that. And they turned around, and they turned around and said, you would need to jump and do this and do that. They went on and on, and I didn't understand. And then in a church service, I was there. I was sitting on a, and I was in the middle where you are at that seat right there. And I, I knelt right there and laid on my back, and I lift my hand up to God. And this guy, he got down on me, and he turned around, and he's, he was said, I'm going to grow a beard until God gives us revival. And there he was. He's got this lovely old face on me. And he's got, bless him, Lord. And he's taking that thing and scratching my face with those whiskers all over him. And telling me, they said, let God just give you with it. And I said, yeah, Lord, give it to me. Get me away from him. <laughs> and I, she saw me. I jumped on my back. And I got about two feet away, something like that. And I came down, and God was giving me the Holy Spirit. See, it's good when you get closer to God. And God does that, where we can come to that point in our lives. I think of the times that are in the Bible. There's times of men like Moses and Joshua. We see Elijah and Elisha. We see Daniel and his three friends. We see the day of Christ and his apostles. We see the time of two witnesses. But until that time, that finished moment, when God comes into our hearts and our lives, this is the day that's been given to me. This is the time that God is using me. I may be 74 years old, and they still say there's some things that might be wrong at the doctor that I saw the other day. But I want to tell you, there's a God that looks over us. Even Stephen, who was going to be stoned to death, he's a man that looked up, and when he did, he saw God inviting him into his presence. When you look at Jesus, you see all these things. It was always an arrival when we can come to God and we can turn it over to him as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the one that comes through. There's so many things I can see in this, and I've read it to you uh, twice and a few of them. But I just want to let you know that what you need in your appearance is that you need to turn it to what God can do to you. You know what God wants to open us up? He makes us bless. He celebrates. He rejoices. He gives all the things are from God. It's one that's reaching out in this time of what we're talking about in Revelation. This is one that's telling you, says, don't worry about John and the, the scars on his body and the boiling things that were on him. He can turn around and look to him and say, we're going to go. We're going to go. He's going to take care of it and then all. If we'll just turn, when we just turn it all to God and say, God, I know there's a lot of things I can share on it, you, but I've already said that to you. And all I want to tell you is that God cares for you. There isn't anything that you're going through right now that God, he's always pouring it out on you. If we'll just let him bless us. And what a beautiful mess when God comes into our lives. And it helps us for that we know that he's there. We've seen the wars of the World War One, World War Two, all the different things that have gone on and on. And there's one that's going to be worse than all of them there ever can is yet still at the door. It's coming soon. 
But we know this, that our God is good. And God takes care of us. And I know that our God is a great big God. Amen? But do we look at it? Do we really stand there like, like John? He's standing there. He's still got burled skin on him. He was out there probably eating the least of food that a man could even have. But somehow or another, he just lifted it up and gave it to Jesus and listened to Jesus and he wrote it down. And when he wrote it, he was telling me he's that good. That God cares. And he loves you. Isn't that the most greatest thing that you'll you think about what do you have that's better than anything than to have the Holy Spirit to come down upon us and to know that He is us and the reason for the kingdom of God. So when we see these fearless things and witnesses, God is going to win. Amen? I can hold on. My God. Is he's good enough? Amen. This is not like some of the sermons I preached to you because I told you about this, this, and this, and that. What you have is there's a time at this point, practically the middle point of the book of Revelation, right in the middle of it, and God come down to her and says, "Let me talk to you. Let me tell you about John. He gave us the words for him to write." We got up and got excited. Amen. Amen. There's some things that are coming up that are not very good in Revelation. There is some that's horrible. But this is a man that he's talking, and he says, just talk and write down about me. And he just wrote it up. It's out there. Our God has done it. Father, we come to that point in our lives, Lord, and uh, thank you, Lord, for the different ways that you work in us. This one here was unique. It's a moment that said that man was saying, I am burned up, I am hurt up, I am not healthy, I'm old, but I love my Jesus. I love him with all my what God can